Hi everyone, uh, now we are going to take up a little challenge, challenging problem statement and we will discuss both the brute force and the optimized approaches for solving this problem on 2D arrays. So let us first understand the problem statement. So it says uh, Rahul's father has a form organized as a n, n cross n grid. So there is a form which is in the form of a 2D matrix. Each square in the grid is either has or does not have a mango tree. So there could be a mango tree, there could not be a mango tree. So the hash represents the mango tree. And he has to divide the form with his three sisters as follows. He will draw one horizontal line and one vertical line to divide the field into four rectangles. So may, basically this is a field and we can draw a line horizontally and we can draw a line vertically. So this is a vertical line and this is a horizontal line. So that it, it gets divided into four quadrants. Okay, we have now four quadrants. His friends or his sisters will choose the three of the four smaller fields and he gets the last one. Okay, so if you make this kind of a partition, then you can see uh, this partition has one, two, three, four, five, six. It has six trees. This partition has one, two, three. It has three number of trees. This partition has two number of trees and this partition also has two number of trees. So what, what is going to happen? The Rahul himself is going to get the smallest one. Okay. So his idea is he want to maximize his minimum. So if instead of making a partition like this, if he makes a partition like this, okay, maybe he makes a cut here and he makes a cut here. You will see this has three trees, this has three trees, this has four trees and this also has three trees. Okay. So instead of getting two number of trees, he can actually get three number of trees by making a cut like this. Okay. So you are, you have to tell, uh, you have to, uh, you, you have to ensure that. Okay. So this is, what is the goal of the problem? The goal is not written here. So goal is you need to tell what is the maximum number of trees he can get okay he can get so basically he has to maximize his minimum he has to maximize his minimum okay so that's the whole idea maximum number of trees he can get by making uh, these partitions so this is what you need to print so in this case the output is three he can get three number of trees okay it may not be possible to get more number of trees by making any partition okay so yes this is the sample output ramu can ramu can ensure that rahul can ensure that he gets three mango trees by cutting as follows now you may ask how we can solve this problem. Okay. So first of all, let us not dive into optimized solution. Let us just think of a brute force solution. Okay. So brute force means we don't know which cut is best. So what we will do, we'll try to make a cut at every point. Let's say we make a cut here. Okay. Let's say we make a cut here. Let's say we make the first cut like this. And we know in this case, the minimum number of trees, is going to be zero okay the trees that he's going to get is going to be zero so that is one option either he should get zero trees but maybe uh, he says no i will not uh, make this as a cut i will make maybe this as a cut maybe uh, like this okay by making this cut he can ensure that he will have divided the field into four parts now this has one tree this also has one tree this also has one, two, three, four, five, and this has one, two, three, four, five, six. This has six trees. So he can ensure that he will at least get a one tree. Okay. But maybe he decides to move one step forward and he says, no, I will make a cut here. I'll make a cut here. So maybe he cuts at this point. And again, he says, okay, no, he will just get the zero number of trees. So this is something that you can repeat at every coordinate okay so what you can do you can actually make you can make a cut at every ij okay so by making a cut at particular ij you will get the four quadrants and you can find the sum of 
each quadrant okay you can find the sum of each quadrant let's say s1 s2 s3 and s4 so how many cuts you are going to make so then you can compute compute s1 s2 s3 s4 for every ij and you keep a track of track of maximum you take a minimum of these okay and let's call this as x and you keep a track of maximum value of x that you can get okay in all these iterations so how many how much time it is going to take so this is a brute force approach okay so for every partition you are going to iterate over this entire four parts of the array to find out what is the sum of these parts so doing this computation is going to take n square time and since we are doing it for every cut so we, there are n square cuts so the overall complexity of this problem is going to be n square into n square this is for making cuts and this is for finding the sum okay and this track of maximum x so for n square options you will get n square values of x and you can find the maximum in just n square time so that is part included in this part so this is a brute force algorithm okay so it would end up you would end up spending order of n4 time so if n is small let's say if n is 100 then it would take roughly 10 per 8 time and your solution will get accepted but let's say if the value of n is 1000 okay then 10 per 4 would be 10 per 12 and what happens in an online judge 10 per 8 instructions take one second then that means 10 per 12 instructions will take how much time it will take 10 per 4 seconds to execute this code for n equal to uh, 1000 that means it is not going to work and you are going to get a time limit exceeded error okay so that means we are going to do a brute force uh, we are not going to do a brute force if n is larger than 100 so now uh, let us see how we can actually solve this problem so the idea is uh, we are going to use the concept of 2d prefix sums okay we are going to use 2d prefix sums and what is going to happen is we are going to make uh, an auxiliary matrix we are going to make an auxiliary matrix in this matrix we are going to store let's say at a particular point let's say this is matrix m this is matrix s at particular ij we are going to store the total number of trees present in the sub matrix starting of ij so s of ij is going to denote the total trees starting from 0 0 till i comma j okay so this is in the sub sub rectangle okay in the sub rectangle starting from this point till this point we are going to store okay how many trees we are going to have in this sub matrix and how you are going to build the build this auxiliary matrix so that is actually uh, pretty easy i will i will uh, tell tell it to you uh, so here actually i have used uh, a different notation so maybe i should call it as a let, let let me call this as a array a and let me call this as a array matrix so we are going to compute this auxiliary matrix okay so now let let me tell you what we are going to do now suppose we want to compute this value okay we want to compute how many uh, how many trees we have till this a particular point so let us assume that we have already computed how many trees we have in this sub square let's say this coordinate is m of ij then we already know the number of trees in this sub square and we also know how many trees are there in this sub square okay so that that will be stored at this particular point and the answer for this will be stored at this particular point okay so basically i can say for m of ij what we need to do we need to add the number of trees in one plus the number of trees in two minus 
the number of trees which are in three and they have been counted twice so this original was one this is two and this shaded part is actually three okay so this is going to be m of i minus one j plus m of i comma j minus one minus m of i minus one and j minus one because the shaded part has been counted twice so using this order one formula we can actually compute the total number of the sum of trees in the matrix starting from 0 0 till ij so we are going to do 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 this 2d prefix sum okay so let me yes plus one as well okay so slight modification in the formula so let us see again if it is not clear so just look at this particular point so what we are saying we are going to compute this matrix from the original matrix a okay and the original matrix a can may have uh let's say this is some coordinate where we have a hash okay so here if we have a hash then we will add one one here okay so if there is a tree at x comma y so we are calculating what is x, m of x comma y so m of x comma y is going to be nothing but let us treat this square and let us assume that when we are computing for this value we have already computing we have already computed this value and this value basically denotes the sum of trees in this entire square and we are assuming that we already know that uh, what is the sum of squares in this particular part okay so this is white one is one the green one is two and we are going to subtract the number of squares which are in this part which are in this part okay so that is three so this is what so m of x y is going to be so we, we are going to add one if there is a tree here and we are going to add zero if if there is not a tree here so we are going to say m of x y is going to be one plus m of x minus one y plus m of x comma y minus one minus m of x minus one and y minus one and this value would be zero if no tree okay so if tree it is present then one otherwise this value is going to be zero so that is what we have shown in this formula so i hope the first part is clear so first part is to construct an auxiliary matrix m and from your original array a so once you have this matrix then your work is going to be very easy so let us see the second part in the second part we actually need to find out uh, okay so now let's say we we know the auxiliary matrix m so what we need to do we need to make cuts at all possible i comma j or we need to make a cut at particular x comma y that is a coordinate and we need to find out the sum of these four quadrants okay the quadrant one the quadrant two the quadrant three and the quadrant four now the sum for the quadrant one s1 earlier we were going doing an iteration but now we have already done a pre-computation and the sum would be present here so that sum would be nothing but s1 would be nothing but m of x comma y okay what about s2 the sum for the quadrant two so that would be nothing but you you find out this entire sum okay you know what is the sum for uh, this particular part okay that is stored here that is stored as uh, that is stored as m of uh, this one so this is x row and n column let's say the nth column okay so this is nothing but m of x comma n minus the sum for this part that is m of x comma y okay so indexing you can look at if it is n minus one -th column then you put it as n minus one okay so let us assume the one based indexing and we are doing m of x comma n minus m of x comma y 
because from this entire array from this entire sum we need to subtract the sum for this part and you will end up getting the sum for the second part similarly for this part that is the quadrant 3 you know the total sum from 0 0 till this point so s3 is nothing but m of so we are we are talking about the yth column and the nth row so it would be m of n comma y minus m of x comma y so we again subtract this particular rectangle so that's what we get and what about s4 how do we get the sum for this part so this is pretty easy we know the total sum till this particular point from this entire array s4 so s4 is go going to be nothing but uh, m of uh, n comma n minus minus s1 s2 and s3 so these three values you have already computed so, so from the entire grid if you subtract these three then you will get the sum for this part so that is m of n comma n minus s1 minus s2 minus s3 okay so now you will get the values of s1 s2 s3 and s4 for each cut in just order one time and since you are making order of n square cuts okay making order of n square cuts you can do it in order of n square into one time and your overall complexity is now reduced to order of n square okay so i hope uh, this solution is now clear to you and i would suggest that you try this problem on your own and try to solve it that's it for this lecture thank you